Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and I am here today with a quick and easy project for Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around, see how we're going to turn one piece of 6x6 pattern paper and some ephemera into two cute cards. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. On the first of the month, Not Too Shabby released their latest box of the month. Right now, I'll put a quick picture up on screen for you. Half of it had some froggy related items and the other half were these adorable ladybugs. Now on the first of the month there was a hop with lots of inspiration so I will make sure to link that hashtag search in the description box below so you can check it out. And speaking of the hop, there is still just a little bit of time to hop along and be entered to win a gift certificate to the Not Too Shabby online store. So make sure to go ahead and go check out those videos and leave them some love, follow all the instructions, and get entered to win. As of the time of recording, there were some boxes left, so I will make sure to link the box of the month and any individual items I might use today that are available down in that description box. I'm pretty sure this one will go quickly. Today, I'm going to be using the Little Ladybugs paper pad and the Ladybug ephemera along with the March 2023 sheet load of cards to get two cards out of just one 6x6 piece of pattern paper and some cardstock, of course. As I get into the process, I will let you know about other tools and products I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Like I mentioned before, I'm going to be using the March 2023 sheet load of cards for my layout, and I will be using the single card dimensions. If you would like this free printable, I will have the video linked below where I tell you how you can get it. For my cards today, I'm just going to use this single piece of pattern paper. The front with the ladybugs will be the top section, and the back with the red pattern will be that bottom strip. Again, you can always make sheet load your own. I'll be using the cutting guides to cut down my piece of pattern paper. Now in my process video I do go over everything in detail, but one thing you might notice if you've watched that video versus this one, instead of starting by cutting the rows off the top, I'm going to cut this piece of pattern paper to four and three quarters inches wide first. Then I'm going to start cutting those rows. That means I have that one tall strip left over on the right to decorate the insides later. Now for the dimensions, don't forget you can get that printable and it has all of the measurements and the instructions. Not only will I link the debut video below, but I'll also link the process video where I show you how I made a whole set of eight. For my matting cardstock, I need two separate pieces. Once again, I'll be using the single card dimensions, and I actually got out some black scraps from my stash to cut these four pieces. You'll see later for my card bases, I have chosen white instead of a color like the printable suggests, so I thought these black mats would be a nice contrast with the card base and the pattern papers. Now I'm going to start adhering the pattern papers to the black mat. Just like in the original process video, I start with the 2 inch square on the left and then I skip over to the 1 inch piece on the right, trying to get an even border on the outside edges. Then finally I add the one and a half inch wide strip to the center and I think this just helps you space them out more evenly. Now you did notice that I turned my piece of cardstock and my pattern paper around. I just find for me it's easier to adhere it when the paper is closest to me. The red pattern paper gets adhered to the bottom of this mat. Again, I try to keep those outside borders all the same. 
And then finally, to cover up the space between the pattern papers, I have that black strip of cardstock. Now, I thought to add some nice texture, I would run it through my dots embossing folder. Now, you'll see later it's mostly covered up, but I still know I added that texture, and I do like the way it worked. That just got adhered flat down across that opening, and it does fill the cardstock mat left to right. I use the same process to get the pattern papers on the other piece of black cardstock, and then I brought in my card bases and I adhered these flat down to the front center. Now don't forget, you can always add dimension with foam tape, but I did try to keep the base as flat as possible because you'll see later, it gets pretty thick. Off camera, I chose the ephemera that I wanted for each card front, and sometimes I like a little less of a white border, so I brought in my small scissors and did some fussy cutting. Now you could always leave it with the border it comes on, because I do actually like a white border, but I just wanted a little less since I had so much ephemera on there, I did want the pattern paper to be seen. After I fussy cut that, I added some foam tape to the back, and now I'm going to start adhering all of my pieces down. When I do, I kind of have the ephemera go outside of that black border. I think it adds some more motion and interest to the card front. Everything, because it was on foam tape, got popped up off there, and it did end up being pretty thick. There were some small areas of overlap, like the ladybug wing, where there wasn't foam tape, so I did use my art glitter glue in my fine tip bottle to put a little glue under there and then stick it to the grass. Once that liquid glue had dried, I took some time and decorated the inside. I used up most of the scrap of red paper for a bottom strip, and then I used a couple of the accent stamps from the Hey Lady stamp set to add a little more color on the inside. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these two cute, quick, and easy cards using items from the latest Not Too Shabby Box of the Month. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.